Thank you. I might begin standing today. So you could have a chair handy if you like to use that for balancing. A blanket's always handy. Sitting on. I'm going to stand with the feet under the hips, feet hip width, legs parallel, feet parallel. And close your eyes and start to sway a little your body weight around your feet. As though you were drawing a little circle with the top of your head. Feel the shape of your spine, your neck. Go around in the other direction. See if you can elongate the curves of the spine and the neck. Feel the connection of your feet to the floor. Subtle shift of weight and substance. And then let yourself find center. I'm going to open the eyes, lift the front of the thighs, the hips, so that you feel that musculature of the leg really holding foundation so you can lengthen again the curves of the spine. We roll the upper arms out and the palms in Tadasana. Take the arms up by your ears, Urdhvahastasana, and then hold your elbows. And we're going to lift the elbows away from the hips. So the sides of the waist lengthen. You get a bit more space between the pelvis and the rib. And then turning gently, keep the hips facing forward, but turning gently the rib around to the left side and back to centre. Keep the hips facing forward and ribs turn to the right side. Mm, keep lifting up through the elbows, keeping the sides of the waist long. Turn to the left side. And back to center and turn to the right. Mm, and back to center. Good. We're going to keep that length in the sides of the waist and forward bend. Good. Take the elbows forward. And then let the upper body just hang down. The weight of the arms hang down, feeling the stretch in the back of the legs. Maybe you feel it in your back. Lift up a little bit if it's too strong in your back. Bend your legs a little bit more. Or try straightening through one leg and then the other. Mm. Good. So have your legs as straight as is comfortable for your back. And now take the torso over to the left side, like you're carrying the elbows over there, and come back to center, and then carry the elbows over to the right side. Good, and then back to center. Let the arms dangle down now, so let go of your elbows. Let your head just hang down. Feel the flow of breath in your body. And roll up. Good. And then arms up and look up. Take the arms behind you this time and hold your elbows behind. Take a moment to feel the curves of your spine. So when you link your arms behind, so I'm, I can't quite reach my upper arms, so I'm holding my forearms near the elbows. 
food, when you're holding the arms like this, you can feel that lower back arch lengthen, the middle back arch lengthen, back of the neck lengthen. Good. And then we're going to keep the hips facing forward and turn the rib cage as far as you can to the left side. Look over your left shoulder. Good. And then back to center. And turn to the right side. And back to center. Both sides again. Center. Good. And back at center, feeling the long curves of your spine. Check in that you're not compressing your lower back, so tailbone, tucking forward a little, enjoying the flow of breath. The ribs are nice and wide here, so you can really feel the lungs expanding. Great, and we're going to come into a forward bend. Take the top of the head as far forward as you can. So hopefully it feels like there's a little more ease for the back. Don't have your legs so straight that it's pulling your back. But if you can straighten your legs, then you might do one at a time to get that feeling of stretch in the hamstring. Just don't do that at the expense of your easeful spine. Mm, good. Hold the legs as straight as your back allows and swing your torso over to the left side. Reach the top of the head as far as you can. Good, and then back to centre. And swing the torso, hip face forward, over to the right side. Good, and one more each side. Keep the back of the neck long. Keep reaching the elbows back as far as you can from your head. That will help you to keep the neck long. Good. And then back to center. And we're going to roll up and release your arms. Take them up by your ear. Look up. Ah. And tadapana. <laughs> nice. Bring the hands in front of the heart. And we're going to make a little squat position for powerful pose. Feel again the connection of your feet on the floor. So just rock your body weight forward a little bit, back a little bit, and then find a really good balance in your feet. Good. Feel the curves of the spine. Let them lengthen. Feel that you're using the front core of your body to support a good feeling in your lower back. Great. We're going to shift weight into the left foot and lift up onto the right tip toes. If you have your balance, just try taking the foot all the way off the floor. Good, and then we're going to put that foot back down okay, without falling down. <laughs> Good, shift the weight into your right foot, lift up onto the left hip toe. Good, if you can take your toes all the way off the floor, do that. Good, toes back down, foot back down. Again, second side, second time round, I mean. You're on your left foot, lifting your right heel off the floor, maybe even the right toes as well, and then put them back down and into the right foot. Good. We're going to dip down a little lower, but lift the pelvic floor, pressing the hands and drawing the shoulder blades down. Good. And then and lift up. And inhale, under. Good, Tadasana. And the upper arms out, palms in. Feel your feet grounded. You're finding each breath. Ah, good. Inhale, arms up. And as you exhale, Uttanasana. Good. Now in your Uttanasana, I'm just going to turn around to the side so you can see. Have your hands on the floor. Now if they don't reach the floor, it's a little bit harder to do this and you might like to grab the seat of your chair so you can have hands on the seat of the chair. And what we're going to try and do is just lift the right leg 
up or the right foot up shy of the floor. Good. Connect to your breath. So even though that might feel like a bit of a struggle, connecting to the ease of the breath. Good. Put that foot back down. Good. And then we're going to lift up the left leg. So even though there's some struggle here in the hip, the belly, we want to keep the neck relaxed. Connect to the breath. So the left foot is lifting straight up off the floor, kind of hooking up the left hip. Good. And then release. Good, and then we're going to bend the knees and inhale and rolling up. Arms up, look up. Good, and then Tadasana. Mm. Good. We're going to come back into our Utkatasana, hands in front of the heart. Draw the shoulder blades down, a little bit of a squat. Find the really most effective curves of the spine. That your spine feels healthy, easeful, the core of the body feels powerful. And we connect to the peacefulness of the breath. Great. Now you're either going to repeat shifting the weight into the left foot, lifting up the onto the right tiptoes, or maybe even the whole foot, right foot off the floor. Or try putting your right heel on your left knee. And then we're going to bend the left knee a little bit more, as far as you can bend without losing your balance. Good. Feel the curves of the spine lift and lengthen. Feel the internal support of the pelvic floor lifting, core of the body lifting. Good, and then release that side. We're going to straighten the leg. A little rest in between. <laughs> Take the arms up. Urdhva Hastasana. Tadasana. Connect to the flow of the breath. Hands in front of the heart. Draw the shoulder blades down. Utkatasana, powerful pose. The leg, so bent knee. Good. Feel the curves of the spine lengthen. All right. Either shifting the weight into the right foot, lifting up onto the left hip toes, or even taking the toes off the floor, or going that step further. If that's working this morning, put your left heel on your right knee. And dip down as far as your knee will hold you. Your standing knee. Good, feeling the curves of the spine lengthen, feeling that the spine is supported, the lift of the pelvic floor, the ease of the shoulders, and the connection to the breath. Good, and then releasing that side. Oh, straightening your leg. Arms up, Urdhva Hastasana. And then Tadasana. Um, nice work. Inhale, arms up. Oh, sorry, you might be facing that way. We're going to, um, let's come to the front of the mat. And you can have the seat of the chair, put your hands on if the floor feels too far at the moment. Arms up, Urdhva Hastasana, Uttanasana. Good. Hands to the floor or the seat of the chair and walk your feet back. Try to press your heels down as you go. Start to walk your hands back as well as your feet. Until you get your heels all the way to the back of your mat. Mm -hmm. And then press them down. So you're in a maybe a short downward facing dog pose. Mm, let's open the chest a little bit more. Let the head relax down a little bit more. Rest the heels, lift the kneecaps, the quadriceps, the sit bones. And enjoying connecting to your breath. 
Good. And then we're going to start to take little steps with the hands and the feet. Walk forward to the front of the mat again. When your hands get to the front of your mat, then just keep walking your feet forward. And rolling up. Urdhvahasana. Harasana. Mountain pose. Inhale, Urdhvahasana. Uttanasana. Step your left foot back towards the back of the mat so that we're in a fairly long lunge position. So your back heel might not be on the floor, but press it towards the floor. Bend your front knee. Good. Drop the hips forward. So you go as far forward as your front knee is comfortable with. Your hands on the floor for support or on the seat of the chair if you're finding reaching the floor. Difficult this morning. Press back through the heel. Lift the breastbone and look forward. Good. We're going to lift up, stand up, bring the left foot in front and balance on the right foot from here. And even if you have to touch your other foot down a few times or you might even need to keep the tiptoes on the floor, there's a sense that you're moving as intended. And from here, we're going to come back to where we were. So we're going to reach back with the left foot, reach the hands down to the floor, so that we're back into that long lunge, lifting the breath by drawing the shoulder blades. Nice work. Step the left foot forward into Uttanasana. Let the head just hang down. Even shake your head a little from side to side. No. Good. And then bend your knees and inhale and rolling up. Arms up. Luka. Urdvahastasana. Tadasana. Hmm. Inhale, arms up, Urdhvahasana, Uttanasana. Big step back with the right foot. So you're in a long lunge. Your back heel is not on the floor, but press it back. Bend your front knee so that your hips drop down as close to the floor as your body allows. Good. And we're going to lift the breastbone. Press the back heel. Draw the shoulder blades back. Nice work. Now from here, we're going to lift up, step forward, balance on the left foot, move with intention. So it doesn't matter if you have to put your foot down to help you balance, whatever your intention. Feel the movement follow. Coming into your balance with your right foot in front. Notice what happens when you connect to your breath. Good. And then we're going to reverse and step the right foot all the way to the back of the mat again as you take a forward bend, hands to the floor, back into your lunge position. Move with intention rather than momentum. <laughs> Draw the breastbone up, forward. Nice work. And then we're going to step the right foot forward so that you're in Uttanasana. Good. And then rolling up. Urdhvahasana and Tadasana. Mm. Okay. We're going to. Try a little in Uttanasana um, with the hands on the floor. Now, 
If your hands don't reach the floor easily enough, use the seat of your chair because we're going to try and turn the, uh, put the backs of the hands onto the floor with the palms up. So another way you can do that, if you're sort of almost at the floor, is to bend your knees a little bit more. So try getting the fingers near your toes, the front of your toes, and the backs of the hands on the floor. And we're stretching out through the fingers and pressing down through the backs of the wrist. Good. But we want to look forward, ease the spine. Good. And then see how you go straight and then your leg. If you can find this position quite easily, put the hands underneath the feet. Your toes are massaging into the wrist. Good. We're trying for that big stretch in the leg, but of course that means we might be overstretching the spine. So bend your legs enough until you feel your spine comfortable. Connect to your breath. And if the legs straighten, let them straighten. Good, and then releasing. And rolling on up, arms up, and parasana. Hmm. Nice work. We're going to take our wide-legged position, so facing the side of the mat, and toes out. So your feet are a little bit wider than your leg is long. Bend the knees, and as you drop the hips, we want to make sure we're really supporting muscularly with the pelvic floor. So lift, lift the pelvic floor. Good. Hip bones are dropping down. Pelvic floor is lifting, and the breastbone is lifting. And we're going to take the arms behind again. You can put your other arm on top and hold near to your elbows. So keep the pelvic floor lifting. Good, and we're going to wave the spine forward. Keeping the hips down, lift up. And waving the spine forward. And lifting. And waving forward. And lifting up. <laughs> nice work. Enjoying that aspen feeling. Good. And then we're going to go from side to side. So straightening one leg as you bend the other. Lovely. Straighten the legs. Oh. <laughs> Turn the toes in and release your arms. But keep the feeling of the back bend. All right, because we're going to fold forward at the hip crease. Prasarita Padotanasana. Put your hands down on the floor under your shoulders. So if you have trouble reaching the floor, you can hold your legs. Can you feel the back bend still? So lifting the breastbone, looking forward. Press the outside edges of your feet. Lift the inner arches of your feet or the inner edges. Try to lift that inner ankle bone away from the floor. Lift the kneecaps, the quadriceps, the sit bones, lengthen the back of the legs. And we're going to walk the hands as far forward as you possibly can without tipping the hips forward so that you feel really long from the hips through the ribs to the armpits uh, and look for space, length and breadth of the armpits. Mm. 
Good. And then walk your hands over to the left side. Reach as far as you can. Good. And back to center. And walk your hands over to the right side and reach as far as you can. Good. And then back to center. Put your hands on the floor so you can wiggle or jump or hop your feet together into a squat position. So you might need to be in a semi-squat if squatting doesn't suit your knees, so you can have your feet hip width parallel and lift up as much as you need to. Yeah. Comfy. Otherwise you're in your squat position, your heels might be off the floor. That's fine. See if you can lift up onto your toes, right up onto your toes and balance. Good, and then try and press your heels down. Maybe your body comes forward. Good, and then from here we're going to sit. And you might be able to sit without using your hands and without falling. <laughs> Good, and sit up onto your hands. We're going to take the legs out wide. So we just did this in a, this shape in the body standing. Here we're sitting. Let's connect to the breath. And feel your sit bones on your blanket, your foundation. If you have any trouble with your knees in this pose, put something supportive. Soft and supportive under your knees. I'm on the back of the heels, but just see what it feels like to point your toes away from you. Good, and point them back in towards you. Good. We feel the curves of the spine lengthen rather than sagging down. Good, and imagine. You could pick up your right heel off the floor. So mine doesn't lift up at all, but you can feel that sensation of the muscle in the front of your right leg, really switching on to try and lift the foot. Good, and then release that side. <laughs> and then we're going to try and do the same on the left. Just imagine you could pick the left heel up off the floor. Good, and then release. Nice work. Take the hands back behind your hips. We're going to lift up, and we're going to reach forward. Keep your back bend shape, that feeling of the curves of your spine lengthening. So find your forward movement, which might be more upright. You might have your hands behind your hips. Good. Now, if, if you're in that position where your spine is more upright, you don't seem to move very far forward, try those little spinal waves. If you have more forward movement, stretch your arms out in front, but keep a back bend shape. Good. And then whether you're doing those little waves or you've got your hands further forward, we're going to turn the torso to the left side. Oh. Really reach with your right hand. You might be able to hold the outside of your left foot. Follow the flow of your breath. Come back to center. And turning your torso to the right side. Your left hand can reach as far as it will reach the outside of the head. Mm. Mm.
Follow the flow of your breath. Find where your body wants to move, to ease, to lengthen. Good, and then back to center. And lifting up. Soles of the feet together. Great. Now hold either your ankles or your knees, and we're going to balance the feet up off the floor. Lengthening the spine. To hold where it makes sense. And you can put your feet back down on the floor if you need to. Right, we want to make our little spinal wave movement. They're probably going to feel quite subtle here. Trying to balance. Engage the curves of the spine, the core of the body. Right, good. Beautiful. Uh, let's do our boat pose. So put the feet out in front. Hold the front of the knee and lean back and find the best feeling for your back, where the shape feels longer most easeful and use the front core of your body to support that and the side core of your body. Good. And then let go with your hands and lean back a little bit more. Connect to the flow of your body. See how you go. Lifting your feet off the floor. If it's too strong in your back, go back to putting your feet on the floor. Maybe you can lift your feet up. Maybe even straighten them. <laughs> I'm running out of room. Ah, <sighs> good. And then release. Lift your spine. <laughs> Wiggle that out. All right, we're going to take both feet around to the right side. Borrowed by Jasana. Have the support as high as you need under your left sit bone so that you're Sitting comfortably. Tuck your feet in a way that feels comfortable for your knee. Classically, we put the left foot into the sole of the right foot. <laughs> Doesn't make much sense when they're turned around like that. All right, we're going to turn to the left side. Okay, we're going to try and stretch the belly, the core. So, you might need to position your torso differently to me to get that stretch, but leaning back sometimes can help. But make the intention of the pose to really turn the ribs so that you're really lengthening from the right hip to the left ribs and then looking back. So maybe you can get the feeling of that. Stretch for the belly and then sit up a little taller for the shoulder blade. Good. And then releasing that side ah, and swapping to the second side. <laughs> I always try it without using my hands, but I can't quite get there. All right, put the um, blanket under your right hip so that you don't feel too skew or the spine doesn't feel too curved to the side. So have that equipment high enough. Feet are tucked in beside the left hip. Doesn't work for everyone, but you want to follow the classic form, the right foot goes into the left sole of the foot. But really, what's comfortable for your knee is this bit. Okay, so we're going to turn to the right side. And again, if your torso is upright and you try turning, you might notice you're not really getting 
the stretch of the belly. So if you lean back, try it and make that your intention to really roll the right rib back so you can start to feel that deep that influence deeply into the muscle of the belly good so you might have had to lean lean back a long way to do that see if you can get your abdomen stretched but then lift the torso up a little to more upright Shoulder blades now, back of the neck long, curves of the, the spine lengthening and connecting to the breath. Ah. ah, good. And then releasing, and we're going to lay down. For a little bamboo pose. Blanket underneath the hips. Ah. Elbows out from your shoulders. Back of the hands towards the floor. In bamboo pose, it should feel like the legs are really just balanced. And if you feel like you're having to pull to hold your back or your belly, you're better to do this posture with your feet on the floor. So don't try to hold your legs up. It's a lot of work here. We're in the winding down phase of the practice. Paying attention to your breath. Noticing what it feels like to connect to your breath. Prana. Life force. Notice where your body could be a little more relaxed. Gently releasing. Feet back down onto the floor. Take your blanket out from underneath. If your legs are bent and hipless, place your left heel on your right knee and pick your feet up off the floor. Put up on the floor and bring your legs in towards you. Stay connected to your breath. Notice. That created tension in your shoulders or your arms, your neck. See where your body can let go of tension, maybe even moving more deeply into the posture. Good, and then release that side. And second side, right heel, left knee. The foot comes up off the floor and hold your legs in. Closest they'll come to the front of the chest. So checking in, where can you let go of tension? Feel tuned in to your breath. Maybe you can even move 
your legs a little deeper into the posture, closer to the chest. Without pushing or pulling. By seeing where the body wants. Good, and then releasing, hug both knees into your chest, rocking a little from side to side. By all means, stay in your own chavasana, namaste. If, like me, you need to finish your practice, then we're going to roll over to the side and come up to sitting. Tuning in to your breathing. Notice how that feels. Take that with you. Into your weekend. Namaste.